Positive com check on YouTube, but not Twitch. And Facebook is still being a pain. I really want Facebook to work. Good, glad that's coming through. I'm just doing a little bit of pre-stream diagnosis on the Twitch chat and the um, Facebook chat. This Facebook chat is extremely being stupid. That's good. Facebook is not. Right. I may have to not stream to Facebook and just send the, uh, the YouTube link because I don't want anybody trying to watch me on there and not be able to chat with me. Yep, let's kill the Facebook stream. And let's go to the channel and just broadcast the, the YouTube link or the Twitch link. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 
that browser because all the other columns work. Yay! Close it and bring up the management screen. We're back. Hey, Cobwebs and Kevin Six. How we doing? Let's turn that off. Move that over. Turn this off. Let's get this ready for some filming. Oh, brush up, brush up, brush up. It should be drier. Oh, I got some mineral spirits in the bottom, which I need to soak up. Hey, Dora. Some sauce, make up some clay, do some filming, get the rest of the. Yeah. Careful on this, I should be able to get a lot of stuff down. Let's see how well we can do it. <laughs> Welcome, Elizabeth. Welcome to the shots. We'll do some working on projects. That really not working. Wonder. Hmm. Just having a look at that other uh, pumpkin there, and it's um, even the areas that I did. Smoothing on, surprisingly, still seem lumpy to me from this angle. Oh well. That's just fine. Nobody cares in the middle of the night of Halloween. I just want to see cool stuff. One big old scoop. And I need another 25 pound sack of flour pretty soon. Two scoops. It's almost September. I figure the Halloween stuff will start coming out in most uh, most shops pretty soon, if not already. Considering that it's the second biggest retail uh, opportunity apart from Christmas. <gasps> Ooh, pardon. Gotcha. I still am after that giant pumpkin skeleton.
I found I really like the Home Depot skulls. They had that $10 for three, and I felt you just couldn't go wrong with that. I also use a website called DeerCatcher.com, which occasionally gets you some good stuff that is way too thick. Check that out myself too. Also willing to take it doesn't take you know for flip all ever to get to you as well like wish does. Uh, so I don't want to water this down too much more. I know my personal favorite as far as the scam lines are the uh, ads I see on Facebook where I saw like the, uh, the giant 12 foot inferno pumpkin uh, skeleton. I'm like, oh yeah, it's $49.95, everybody else is selling it for $300. i like, uh-huh. I know, if I order this from you, I'm going to get like a paper cutout and uh, that's going to be it. And then your company will vanish and I will never hear from it again and lose my money. Yeah, <laughs> that's the one. Yep. I am amazed that Facebook just allows that to happen on such a grandiose scale. No other website I know of has as many obvious scams floating around on them. Uh, the problem I've got is they don't even send you the product you uh, request. It's just obscene. There you have a good one, Essie. Thanks for the uh, purchasing tip. Ooh, these got weakened. It's not good. We 
careful of putting uh, any kind of plastics in water with mineral spirits for any length of time. Keep your brushes. That's what happens. <laughs> yeah, I hear you that. There. Oh, Jesus. I hate when they do that. To just make money on the honest way, how much can you possibly make on a scam that you couldn't make ten times over on real business? But for perfection, I see. <laughs> and I'm just gonna. I accept the fact that I probably will not be able to get one this year just because of a combination of both finances and availability. Skeleton. I'm willing to bet that uh, Home Depot is making a, a handsome profit on that prop. Since the first year they would have had to pay for all their molds and electronics. This year all their molds are pre-made. This one is empty. Oh, 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 maybe not. I've got some on the side, but it's a little dry, and I hate using dry drywall joint compound. So I don't want clumps in my stuff. I know you can. I just uh, I don't have a lot of cash right now. <laughs> riding the wire until school kicks up and I start getting paychecks again. Um, I wanted to get a larger bucket myself. The last time I saw one was down at Walmart for a pretty reasonable price, but uh, I saw on Amazon drywall joint compound and I ordered it thinking it would be this size but instead it, it's it's that size and so I'm gonna use this one up first I would like a little bit more in there so Wonderful material, gypsum. Quick, easy, simple. Yeah, 
add it to paper fluff and turn it to rock. Uh, if it's been dried too long, even water won't uh, soften it up. Um, I don't have to mute for this phase. I thought Super Chat was only over on um, Facebook. Does, does the YouTubes do it too? I can bring this up in a separate window without a problem. Oh my god, Essie! Ah! <coughs> now I see it! Thank you so much! I, I guess I'm gonna get a big, uh... Holy crap! <laughs> ah! Holy crap! Ah! Thank you! Wow, now, now I know what those big, you big time Twitch streamers feel like. Holy Jesus! Thank you so much! Well, never fear, that's going to be going right into drywall joint compound and get recycled back into the hallway. <laughs> Thank you so very, very much. I'll hopefully make today's stream worth it. Boy. <laughs> wow! Oh, you are awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, that will definitely help in the situation of the the waiting for school to start again finances. <laughs> oh, no, I'm going away! Ah! <laughs> Holy crap! <sighs> that is true, but still. Holy crap! <laughs> Yeah, I do also need to put my little uh, paypal.me tip jar link in these. That's also uh, a methodology. They take a little bit less. Uh, I do not have a Patreon now. Just because, as I mentioned in a previous video, I consider with Patreon... Um, you know, if people are paying like a monthly type of thing, um, you expect content for your money. And sometimes I go dark for, you know, an age. And I don't consider it right to take people's money to not produce regular content. I do have a Venmo, uh, which I started up for my, um, my drone photography business. But I don't know how much they take from transactions. Uh, and I'm going to mute real quick because this is going to get loud.
best damn investment I ever made. This. Woo. Yeah, that's me too. I've got a full-time job, and I can't guarantee I would be able to make people's money worth their while. It's not fair. If I was doing this full-time, you better believe I would have a Patreon. 100%. I really need to experiment one day with clay consistency over various dilutions of sauce. This feels ever so crumbly to me. But it's got the right consistency in my hand. Um, that's an easy fix. Let's just have a quick little splash. Really tiny splash. I'm not going to mute this time just because it's going to be a quick little mix, so bear with the, the rant for a second. I am using wood glue on this particular iteration, but downstairs I have six gallons of white glue, so... Realistically, I don't think it makes a huge difference. <laughs> I'm in too. I'll watch Ross do this stuff. That feels a little better. Cool. So, let's get some recording going. I would agree. Wood glue absolutely tends to be smoother. I know that there are different adhesive chemicals used in the two, at least at uh, different concentrations. And at one point, I looked them up. Um, but realistically, it's uh, it's not so noticeable. I find that it's worth it to uh, be exclusionary of one for the other. Alright. So let's do the boring bit first and just get this guy... And that's the weight. the Elmer's at about 12 to 15 a gallon usually. Um, an iPad and a camcorder should work absolutely fine. I use, I got this, m mind you, this is the, the video recorder I got when I first did these back in, what was it, 2015 when I first started. Uh, this thing is a Panasonic uh, well, here. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> the, the majesty of camcorder. Yeah, that's all I have for my filming. actually willing to bet right now the camera on my phone is probably better than uh, the camcorder I'm using, but that gives me a nice stable filming platform. 
Uh, I'm just tap. I was kind of tapping for two reasons. One, to get a sense of um, how thick the um, the outer layer was around here, and I was also somewhat listening for just kind of the echo off the, the hard spot versus um, the rest. Because I wanted to talk to the camera show the current progress and then decide where I want this facing for when I start with uh, the coating here. So, but let's get the, the filming active because the real, the main shtick of why I am back in such full force and throttle is to make sure that this video is out uh, far enough before Halloween for people to be able to use it for their own projects. Yeah, tapping around gives you a really good idea of strength test and if you do a hard tap um, especially for the beach ball if it doesn't depress in then you know you got enough layers on there versus if it really depresses in right here there's a you can see the shadow change there's a depression there which means in this spot I definitely don't have six layers it probably isn't a bad thing but it's just a good indicator of overall strength Let's film. Film and get to work. So starting layer is on, at least the top of the face for as much of the last batch as I had. I'm going to get to work on adding that same layer all the way around. When you're doing this, be mindful that whatever layer you put on is going to have some more weight. So if you start working like this, this is going to get very, very tippy unless you have some sort of incredible holder at the bottom. So when you are working on newer sections, it behooves you to put your more weighty part at the bottom at least to start. And we're on to the real stuff. Yes, I freaking love the beach ball. Absolutely adore it. If I added some weight to the container down below, yeah, it would be superior. Absolutely. I have used uh, ones with sand in them before to great effect. Just don't have one around right now, so. And truth be told, for the moment, I don't even need that. Yeah, definitely, Ross. Make a make a page so we can. Follow and watch your stuff and get notifications of when it turns on. Take care, Essie. Thanks for hanging out, and thank you very, very, very much for your amazing donation to the cause. That will definitely be going into uh, joint compound for me. You're awesome. Love ya. <laughs> Oops. 
Yeah, I probably ought to talk to uh, the folks at Ezra Split about seeing Super Chats on YouTube, because I didn't even know that Essie had done that. And that's not cool! Somebody gives you a giant nugget like that, they deserve some goddamn recognition. able to say thank you again. Ah! Ah! Essie, <laughs> you majestic sausage, as the spiffing grit would say. <laughs> thank you so much. say I'm hugely struggling, it's just a matter of last year I had a 40 minute commute to work and whereas in previous years of teaching, I had an 8 minute drive all that gas money that wasn't getting spent was getting saved and I never had to worry about throttling myself over the summer as much as I do now Whereas this summer has been a, all right, due to all the gas expenditures, we only have this much, and it must be able to last all the way into mid-September. Oh, I know. I budgeted carefully. I am, I am no longer a 22-year-old knucklehead with a hole in his pocket. I am an experienced person. You absolutely will, Essie. I have no doubt. Because I know that I plan on filming as much as possible this coming week. Again, I want to get this video out in early September in its final form. So anybody who goes to my pumpkin tutorials... Yeah, what I need to do actually is I need a text file that has all the stuff um, so that when XSplit prompts me to start a stream I can copy and paste all that data right into the stream information. with having cash. doc that has all the stuff and also has the PayPal link that I can copy and paste when I start the stream. That'll be easier. Much easier.
<laughs> nice. Which Star Trek series? in the film industry then. That's awesome. <laughs> awesome. I hope you folks headed off real well. the only way to do it. <laughs> I wish I had some more mechanical prop making skills. I've got the 3D printer, but not quite enough experience with the uh, Fusion 360 to go into more technical details. I wish I could say I've been to more cons too. Never really get the chance. Well, if I get my job position moved around. Things might open up a bit more. Con. I'm not in Norwich, New York. There's nothing here. Hold on, that's another big chunk of flour. I hate when my mixer doesn't get all the stuff. I think the nearest city to me that could handle a con, there's Binghamton, but Syracuse would be the major one. <laughs> it is. Have a good one. I've got one in the mix. Uh, I just find that that beater seems to work really well across the board. 
it'll mix up sauce and it'll mix up uh, clay without too much trouble. And one of the main reasons I bought this particular mixer was that it was inexpensive while still having a fairly robust motor. It's one of those, it'll do everything, it'll do bagel dough that's really rock hard and all the other stuff. So, yep, I needed to do thick material. Yep, I, um, I actually got my black mixer for the express reason that it had dough hooks with it. I wanted to be able to use those for the clay. But that stand mixer really just powers through everything. So I don't have to worry about it too terribly much. talk at the camera for a second here. You might occasionally catch me on here putting a layer of paste down on the paper mache before I add the paper clay. And I'm doing this just to get a little bit more adhesion between the two surfaces. This is another thing I did not used to do. I used to just slap the paper clay right on there. But if I'm ever concerned that I can get a better grip between the clay and the paper, one quick the flap of sauce on here will, I think, increase the adhesion a bit. So that's why I'm doing that. My first layer of clay is about three to four millimeters thick, maybe a quarter inch. Just as a general rule of thumb. And honestly, the only reason I want it like this is so that when I pull the beach ball out, I know that this thing is absolutely iron. <laughs> well, unless you're doing it for a living, never feel bad about studying for more real world stuff. <laughs> never ever feel bad about it. And most days I'd rather be doing uh, pumpkineering than whatever I'm currently up to. Yeah. Oh, is that a teaching admin certification? Oh, like Salesforce. No. <laughs> you would not be getting teaching admin certification from something called Salesforce. <laughs> Any kind of administrative position will usually net you quite a lot more 
then uh, the grunt work. Uh, let's see here. Pumpkins in the display this year. Well, this one is a, a bit of a double-edged sword in regard to the fact that every year we have usually a minimum of... Uh, oh, God. How many did we get last year? 20 to 23 real pumpkins. And then however many paper mache ones I've got around and about at the time. So... Most of my displays usually include total pumpkins, about 30 to 35. And um, paper mache pumpkins, how many do I have? I maybe have 10, 10, 12 paper mache pumpkins that are done, set, complete, and go into the display. I think if there's ever to be like a next phase in development for my pumpkining will be to do a lot of the fancy carve pumpkins. Like I carved that headless horseman pumpkin every single year. I've done it so many times now that I don't even need a, a template. I can sketch it from memory on the pumpkin and do it. But I wouldn't mind having a bunch more of the fancy carve pumpkins pre-done because lord knows we carve all of our pumpkins the night before halloween um, traditionally and consequently <laughs> your hand starts to cramp and uh, it just can get really bad but if you do a fancy carve on that night before halloween that really takes a lot of time training is nifty no matter where it's done. I always found in all the companies that I worked for there was uh, too much of an emphasis in the training on like here watch this video okay now you know it. There was no practice with an instructor kind of angle on most of it. Oh God, yeah. Yep, I have actually seen that firsthand in a few circumstances. Though usually it was directed at the employees along the lines of, "What well, you've been trained, so you know how to do it, obviously, and now you're not doing it. But you've been trained. places is I don't know. I'd love to go into a management rant, but it's a it's a weird circumstance. That really wants to go that way. So I probably ought to start Currently is resting on that because otherwise I'll get a bowl. Can I rest it here? Barely. It might be time to stop on this pumpkin because it's going to get way too wobbly. <laughs> oh, wait until I smooth it! 
There's nothing. You gotta do a smoothie. Trying to talk at the camera again. So I've hit a spot in my construction where I've noticed that I'm really, really tipsy on my mount here. And in order to get this sucker set, I would have to probably put it on the bowl. But the downside is obviously this is wet clay. And if I do that, I'm going to get a bowl impression. Where is it? all the way around there. I do not want that to happen. So that's an indicator to me that it's probably a time to stop and let this layer harden before proceeding on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just smooth down the edges and then I'm going to get this thing a smoothing layer of paper mache sauce so it's going to be as even as the front face. The beach ball will fit through there, yes, absolutely. It'll collapse right down without any problem. And it's kind of a fun process too to kind of when you're yanking it out to hear it peeling away from the side because you know it's leaving that nice smooth exterior. That's just super nice. That's like you only need a grip. And the more watery sauce is near the top, which is excellent. In fact, I'm just going to goober this on to start with. in a bit. Right. Make sure we hit the transition point pretty well. Kind of nice too, even if you're doing a trash bag pumpkin, but you just know it's leaving behind all those little divots that you're gonna have to try desperately to get varnish and paint into later. And that's just uh, <laughs> that's a friggin' nightmare. Probably gonna have to have a nomenclature section for this tutorial as well so people know what I'm talking about when I say sauce it's not too hard to figure out but this is the internet there will be confused folks confused because they're stupid, they'll be confused because they're trying to logic it out, and I just said something that doesn't quite fit in with what they were expecting.
And finally, I'm just going to run my finger over this to try to get that extra layer of smoothness after I've given it kind of a you know, sauce aftershave. And we'll see if we can get this any better. I'm going to pay particular attention to any areas of transition between my old hard mache and my new soft stuff. And I'll try to get those as smooth it down and uniform as I can. This particular beach ball is probably um, 14 inches across or so. Be my guess, 14, 16. With that all done, it's time to set this guy out to dry and then pick it up on the next time for him. All right, filming has stopped. Keeping polyurethane from drying out in a can, um, there is ultimately nothing that can be done about super long-term storage. The basic thing is just keep that can as sealed as you can possibly get. And to do that, you have to watch out for any kind of polyurethane that wants to run down into that sealing rim of the can because obviously what it'll do there is harden. And then when you're trying to hammer the can back in place or the lid back in place, you will have um, areas inside that are raised and the can lid won't fit back in there very securely all the way around. Uh, let's find out. This is wood finish. Somewhere around here I've got. There we go. Alright, so here is Helmsman Spar Urethane. Um, it's easily a year old. And as I'm shaking it, I don't hear sloshy sloshy sounds, which is alarming. So I might consider that. And I can tell right here I've got this white area where I didn't follow my own advice. So consequently something got in there. I'm willing to bet it's probably latex paint. And I'm willing to bet that the top layer on the inside of this can is a brick. So, 
yeah. Top layer of this thing is an absolute brick. Uh, the nice thing is that I know that underneath that top layer is some nice liquidy urethane. And if I punch through it, then it'll be all right. The thing you want to do, though, is after you punch through that top layer, which will just occur, uh, make sure that uh, you get as many of those floaty chunks out there. Because um, otherwise they can get mixed up and go on your paint. It's even better if you can get like a knife and cut yourself around the inside and then just pull that whole big flap out. Ah, this is what it's for. Chit chatting about uh, the particulars. Nice thing is, I could probably leave this thing out here and that would offer a nice uh, dehydration barrier for at least a while to the stuff. But I've gotten a whole bunch of crud inside that seal and consequently it never sealed as well as it could or should have. And that's just one of the problems with working with, you know, almost any kind of urethane, spar varnish in particular, because the varnish gives the kind of nice solid layer and some will drip out on your paintbrush as you lift it up just happens yeah. but at least with the urethanes it almost always forms a top layer and then preserves the stuff underneath and right now I'm just trying to carve out a few of those nastier bits of goop that are cluttering up the seal. Yeah. No, it just, just happens. Anytime this seal isn't perfect and the stuff inside can uh, have evaporation occurring, because if I'm right, there's going to be a material in here that's going to be a, a volatile, which means that it's, you know, it's... It's not necessarily that the water inside is evaporating and that's what's causing it to dry, but there's another organic liquid in there that's evaporating and causing it to bond tightly together and reseal. So, but again, it happens. Or you could use one of those fun little tricks people do where they take the rubber band and put it around, you dunk your brush in, and then when you come up, you wick it off on the rubber band. So that's a possibility. But if you get any gunk in the seal here, then obviously it's going to do it. And the other problem too is if your can here gets gunk up here in the seal, then it's going to cause areas of air leak. The volatile organic inside the urethane will escape. The bonds inside the resin will link and it will do what it's supposed to do and harden up. Like right here is where I can tell my big escape point was because there's a big caked chunk of stuff on here. Yeah. Scrape it off or wipe it down when it's wet and it won't happen so bad. But over time, it will happen. Nothing for it until somebody invents some sort of hyper hermetic can of sealant or sealing can. And that's unlikely to happen because why would you do that if you could just put it in one of these? <laughs> They're less expensive and people will have to replace the stuff that's no longer working. It's perfect from a marketing standpoint. Well, don't forget that the one gallon size also does tend to be cheaper. And I'd be tempted to search the internet. There's probably somebody out there who's like a professional painter who's been dealing with this forever and really knows their ropes. Can give you even better suggestions for how to get more longevity out of your paints.
I mean, theoretically, you're making so many pumpkins that uh, <laughs> you don't have time for it to get. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we all know that's not how life works. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Come on now, little pieces. I need you too. Alright, so let's get his tooth in place. that you're not making enough pumpkins. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Why is there war in the Middle East? Because they're not making enough pumpkins. If they were doing their pumpkin job right, they wouldn't have time to be having conflicts. problem in the universe can be solved by making more pumpkins. I think those eyes are going to be very nifty. Uh, the only potential problem with them will be the fact that they are also not hugely well supported. So they might need a little bit of re reinforcement with clay, or I might give them a second external layer of clay as well. So we'll see. We'll see as we get closer to carve-out time. Which, with a lot of these pumpkins, is going to be pretty close together, quite frankly. I think the, the skull pumpkin is the one that's furthest along. <laughs> so CNN reporter Dave Smith... Since the world started making tons of paper mache pumpkins, air pollution is down, gas prices are down, <laughs> the homelessness situation has gone away, and children are reading more. Get ourselves a Bill and Ted utopian future due to pumpkins. I knew that those had to protrude quite a bit to add flavor to that face. And a few things are not made better when making pumpkins. It's only 2.24. I have game night tonight at the uh, local game shop, but that's not until at least 4, 5, 6 o'clock. Play some Pulsar, probably.
there's a game called Pulsar, I think it's 2847, which is an absolutely excellent um, board game ex of ex exploration and exploitation. You're a, uh, a company trying to exploit stellar resources, and it's kind of a race to see, it's a yeah, victory point based game, but it's a race to see who can get the most out of the the untapped galaxy that is the board map. And uh, there are many ways to play it, which is what we like about it. It's not just based on who does the one thing better than everybody else. It's based on, you know, did you go exploring more than anybody else? Did you finish more corporate projects? Did you start up more power facilities? Did you start up more com communications relays? Lots of ways to win. I wish I could snap my fingers and make the uh, the filming pumpkin dry right now. <laughs> and when I'm done filming for the day, I'll probably bring him down so he can be more directly in the path of the fan that I've got going. All right, that's empty, but we need to grow up some more. To sauce this down. Uh, whoops. Won't hurt to sauce this down now. And resauce that tooth because I just whacked it. No, no, don't even need to resauce it. A little finger damping fixed it, no problem. Oh uh, no, this is a board game at the. Um, Local gaming store. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Teleport to Texas, put it outside for 10 minutes. Whoosh! In the heat of the forges of the fining state. People tell tales of the, the southwestern states' regular average temperatures, which uh, curdle my milk and make me scream for AC. States, you can get sun baked pumpkins. Hey, hey, hey. It 
can get chilly, certainly. In the last few winters, we've had some significant storm events. Yeah, I saw that hurricane path was uh, zooming right in. I know Pearl right now, I think she mentioned she was trying to conserve her phone battery power because the power was out. All right, let's mix up some more clay. With most of the remaining sauce. If I remember right, Ida was headed right into the heartland of Louisiana. Also, let's make sure. Man, I've got I've got a bunch of stuff stuck to the sides. So let's give it a, a re up. Let's move the journal. Honestly, consistency is. Am I, I, I could add a splash of water to it, but there's no point. Give me everything but a dread for smoothing. Let's go. Currently up towards Jackson, or at least the eye of it has. It's going to skate off northeast toward Memphis and Louisville. 
It's uh that's a bear of a hurricane, that's for sure. Gonna mute for the uh, widget there. It's a little wet, but it's fine. It's fine. It's all fine. I'm not going to think about the clay more than the clay is thinking about me. Hey, Shanika, glad to have you around. <laughs> uh, it's one of the reasons I love the medium, too, is it really can be adapted to everything. You could hate Halloween with a mad, violent passion and still be able to use this for whatever art projects you do love. Because it's such a versatile art medium. person you should check out on YouTube is a place called Ultimate Paper Mache. Uh, the proprietor of that channel, Joni, makes amazing non-Halloween based uh, paper mache art. There's also a lovely lady named Sharon Ajala who does the same thing.
I think some of Gary Fay's early stuff is also uh, mache-based. He's gone very uh, extensively into 3D printing now, though, because that's how he makes his livelihood. Cool extendable hands. Alright, this little guy is completely externally sealed. No problem. Oh yeah, Jay Olson. Yep. There's actually a, just a ton of uh, really good Halloween mache artists out there. Stalloween does some amazing stuff. I think he also does some non-Halloween stuff, too. He's a general excellent paper mache artist. For a while, he had a, a studio open where people were taking lessons and doing it and doing different projects. Uh, I know he's since closed that studio, but... This stuff is still amazing. Yeah, okay. And this one's all set for now. I should probably pull this one. I kind of want to put it somewhere because it's in the painting stage rather than the sculpting stage. And I can use the space for drawing stuff that's in the sculpting stage. It's a stage out of step. Community we get going together is freaking amazingly cool. Alright. Back to my buddy here. I don't think I want to take the lower jaw out any further. I think the upper jaw is pretty cool. He's going to need to be. do this, his lower jaw is not going to be exposed enough. He's going to need to be rocked back at least to there. And if he's on the ground, he should probably be up a bit. So... We'll have to slowly adjust as we do it. That'll have him like that, but he'll be about an inch lower. And that won't be bad. Alright. So that's not bad. Let's take a look at. This doesn't feel bad at all for smoothness. This. Here, however, really feels rough. So does that. So let's do a let's do a smoothing run here. Really tiny amount of clay. 
pick on these rough areas and really just turn it into a goober with sauce. Probably shouldn't be as worried because nobody's going to notice this. But but I will. So. For me, damn right. <laughs> Really, no point in oversaturating or over smoothing. Like I said, nobody's going to notice. Got a few little cracks to fill. Those I will be careful of because unfilled cracks means spots where. Paint will miss. And if paint and waterproofing miss, then that means moisture gets in, and that means mold and destruction. And I mean, even mold and destruction is heavily contingent on me storing these stupidly, but. Take the risk. Ooh. And a quick fill is all it take to fix it. Hey, bro, how we doing? Still alive down there in the, uh, the hurricane zone? And is your power back on? Is his nose still too big? We cut it. Nah. It's fine. It's fine. Don't. Glad your house is in good shape. Kind of expected the power and water cut off. I imagine you guys stocked up well before the storm, though.
figured you'd be smart about it. Where are my tiny cracks here? Imagine everybody and their brothers trying to get gas. Oh, there's a big crack I almost missed. Not even a crack, just a gap left by when I put the new tooth mounting in the front. Still not sealed. These top ones don't really have it. Good. Yeah, I figured gas is a huge grabbing point. Um, ah, I've got most of these all on. Um, Someone once asked, can you pull out the beach ball through such a tiny hole? And I said, yes, let's prove it. What I'm doing is I'm holding the nozzle open, putting in two fingers, and just pushing down on the ball. And doing so, I'm kind of hooking parts of the ball and grabbing it towards the front. Yep, and you can hear it pulling away from the internal walls, leaving that nice smooth surface. ready to be used on the next pumpkin. Again and again and again. And obviously if this was the old garbage bag, I would be currently cussing and pulling out tiny little bits. Uh, there will always be some mold spots on these. So that's nothing to worry about. This one even had a slight puncture here that I uh, electric taped up. That's fine. I love it. Oh my god! <laughs> if only, if only J-Wall had used that method on the video I watched, I would uh, so 
So, 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 so. Have used that method. <laughs> oh. These guys are so much heavier with the, the extra clay step. There. But that's part of the good thing of doing it this way too. So I think what we'll do now is carry down the extra section. Uh yeah, I probably will. I'll take that into the bathroom and give it a little hose down. And that's honestly, in fact, I might even just give it a wash, just add some soap to it too. That's just mostly to make sure that I'm not deliberately injecting mold into a spot. Just because you really, the mold will come by itself because you're using flour. An open area, but why invite it in? You know. Let's take this. Try to make sure this is as uniform as it can be. For the smoothing. Easily get enough clay here for at least three extensions. This one's a little lopsided. I'll take this clay back over. Smoothing. Unfortunately, we're coming around to the back of the pumpkin, so nobody will notice any problems here because nobody's going to be crawling around the pumpkin. If they are, we have a serious problem in the hunt.
smooth into each other. This one's a big one. I got plenty of clay. There's a bad transition line. Oh god, yes. Doing this with a knife or a saw would take for flip all ever. So, we will absolutely use the Dremel with a zip cut bit to take out the bottom 100%. Oh, I 
love these marvelous five fingered manipulators we were gifted. Mm. Alright. Invisibilate the transition points. <laughs> By doing that, I mean make them invisible to other people. I will always see them. <laughs> Really not too worried about the tops looking good. 
because they're going to be on such a downturn angle that it would be almost impossible to make out any detail from them. Now there was a transition line over here, which fortunately in the smoothing in the muck is really hard to see now. I think we have enough clay left to do that area. No, I'm too small. Balls. Um, so what can we do? This clay. I can give a stronger jawline. Which, let's, uh, let's experiment with it. It's not bad, and if I don't like it, I can smooth the edge down in there. But I think it'll be worth it. Let's make one for the other side. Transition line is addressed. That's great.
<laughs> I must say, I love going to the hardware stores and answering the what project are you working on question. Because mine are always guaranteed to be unique. Walking out there with a whole bunch of 2x4s. What are you doing with those? Oh, I'm making crossbows. What? <laughs> yeah. The science teacher. We make crossbows. <laughs> oh. Wow. Not the typical answer you get. Yep. I'm walking out with the insulation, as you mentioned there. What are you doing with that? I'm making paper mache pumpkins. Uh, okay. <laughs> Not the expected answer. doesn't want to smooth very well. Nobody's going to mind. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Expecting you to put us oh, I'm adding something to my garage, I'm building a shelf. Never I'm making monsters for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> well, the wood is the uh, the frame section of them, and you use uh, heated PVC for your bow tension. But I had that project shut down, so I can't ever do it again. <laughs> I've gotten that reaction a few times too. Like, where are you doing? Oh, just right over here on this street. Da -da -da. Okay. <laughs> you sure to come by your place? Yes, please do. Oh god, yes. Yep, you can make them in like a target shooting strength of about, you know, 25 or, you know, 25 or less pound draw weight. Or you can make them hunting strength where you have about a 100 pound draw. They absolutely work. Their accuracy is down to how well they're constructed. And some students blow through it and don't do much with it. And so their accuracy sucks. And some students make very, very impressive things that shoot very, very well and could conceivably be used for hunting. Individually stringy as my other one, but uh, not bad. Because the other one I did the wormy worms, and that was how we did its stuff. Make a wormy, slap it on, flatten it down. I think I'm gonna stick with that technique for the video. These are going to need wire braces for the teeth because otherwise it'll just be stuck on there with mache and that means those teeth will get knocked out and fall over left, right, and center. <laughs> Unless I use plastic or some other medium, which I'd quite frankly rather not. Uh, do I have some wire? It's so the green wire, but that's plastic coated. 
Yeah, I got the 14 gauge back there. I'll grab that. Work on it next session. Uh, oh, yeah. This guy can just kind of sit down and dry. I think we've hit a daily impasse. That one's drying, that one's drying, the big one's drying. More out of clay. And our paste is out, and there's not many more projects I can work on until those dry. That's why it's always good to have about 10 pumpkins going at the same time. <laughs> Don't ever have to stop. <laughs> This time I'm actually going to clean this brush right now. Knocking all this stuff out of it at the outset. And then letting it air dry. Make a mess. Let's make a mess over the wall. Good. Okay. Uh, well, unfortunately, we're probably done for the day. Or at least we're done until things dry. Oh. can't really start on the other idea I have for a project. I was listening to a guy describe some enemies in a Dungeons and Dragons game and uh, there was one that had a, a one of those hooded heads and from time to time the face would rotate underneath to reveal a new hideous visage. And I thought it would be really cool if you could make a mask concept like that where you had a um, a primary mask and then kind of a headband with a motorized gear in it and on a signal click the headband would rotate the mask face so a new mask face would come in and you could have three faces that you rotate to uh, by your choice and I thought that would be so friggin cool to have that. You'd need a hugely oversized hood, and the biggest problem I figure is the distance between the, the holder and your shoulder, because the mask would have to clear that on a regular basis, but I am thinking of that for a long-term project. Why are you apologizing? It's all just, you know, fun anyway. You're fine, Wolves Death. <laughs> Honestly, we were just wrap it up, though. Because I'm, I'm out of sauce, and I've gotten to as far as I can get on most of these projects today until they dry. So there's only a 24-hour dry though right now because they've got a very thin layer of clay on just about all of them. But the triple-headed changing mask is my next big can it be done project. And that will involve use of a 3D printer because there's no way I can make those parts move without some sort of good plastic and or metal bit. Metal will be honestly too heavy. That's the next concept. Who knows, I might be able to witch wood it. And the masks themselves might be quite light. I might have to use um, some foam carving techniques for it just because it really has to be light enough to wear. And the other concern, too, will be how the whatever mounted tracks they're on curve. Because you've got a lot more round in the front of a face than you do on the side, which is more flat. <laughs> Sadly, our, our skulls are not balls. 
on any track would have to have a curving mechanism to it. Yeah. Food for thought, food for thought. So, otherwise, gang, I think I will be seeing y'all next time. Tomorrow I have um, a training at work, which I believe I will head to just because I really want to chat with my principal and see what's going on with possible changes to my position. We'll see what's up with that. Some of stuff. Good. All right. So thank you very much for joining me once again. And otherwise, we will see you around for the next uh, the next magical session, which hopefully will be tomorrow afternoon, when all this stuff is dry and we can get blazing on more filming. I think I still have about at least six hours left on this thing. Yeah, here's hoping. Here's hoping. The big thing right now is staffing. If they can find somebody to fill my old position, then I should be able to transit to the new one. Cool. All right, have a good one, everybody. And we will see you later.